so I'm here today to talk about capnography with you guys. Capnography is the capnometry and capnography or the measurement of how much carbon dioxide is exhaled by our patients during anesthetic. It is a very, very useful measurement. Um, if you think about life and metabolism as a fire, capnography is going to measure the carbon dioxide, which is the smoke. And by looking at the smoke, we can tell a lot about what is happening with that fire. So to, for the body to actually get carbon dioxide out, we need oxygen to go all the way into the lungs, then transfer onto the blood, then be carried all the way to the red cells, oh, through, through the red cells to the tissues in the body, be absorbed, be metabolized, and then they get carbon dioxide back, needs to be taken to the lungs, and then back out. Uh, so when you're, me you're measuring the end of this long sequence, car the capnography actually gives you insight into a lot of different things. When you compare it to the pulse ox, the pulse ox only counts all the way to um, oxygen gets in getting into the red cells. It doesn't even tell you anything about whether or not the oxygen um, is absorbed and used up by the cells when it reaches them. Because of that, um, capnography can give us an insight on Capnography and capnometry can give us an insight on, is my patient breathing? How fast? How's the quality? What are the trends? Is my ventilation okay? So respiration is the air getting into the lungs. Ventilation is the air actually getting into the little alveoli. It gives you a insight into circulation and how well the heart is doing its job. It gives you an insight on metabolism and in pulmonary function. It's also very useful to detect some um, equipment malfunctions, like if an ET tube is kinked or misplaced, or if the cuff gets poorly inflated, the capnography can tell you that as well. And doing CPR, it is the only thing that can actually tell you if your compressions are working. Even if you're trying to just feel ephemeral pulse, what you can be feeling is just a, um, a flow back. So if you imagine that the blood is going this way, this way, this way with each beat, when you're doing compressions inappropriately, they could be doing just this, but you'd still feel it. But capnography can tell us if there is fire, aka if life is back, and if the compressions are doing its job in simulating that life. Now, to use um, capnography, you're going to see a wave and you're going to see a measurement of ETCO2. ET means end tidal, which basically is the last bit of exhale breath, the peak of it, it gives you one number. That number should be, ideally, between 35 and 45. If we are uh, below 35, we are hypocapnic, and if we are above, 30, above 45, we're hypercapnic. Hypercapnia can be very dangerous because too much um, CO2 is toxic to the body. So when we are between like 40 to 50, we need to start investigating what's happening, I need to reverse this. If you get to a point where the capnography, the ETCO2 measures above 60, you need to start administering first aid, which is you do a few breaths for your patients just to help them get that build up of toxic CO2 out of their body. And then once that's out, then we address the reason of why it got to that place. Um, 